All right, so let's mosey. <clears throat> Scheduled appointments, no minutes, no public comment unless Dan wants to say something else. No. no. Old business, review and sign special town meeting warrant. So the question is, are there any other articles aside from Article 11, which was the article we talked about in the executive session, that we need to discuss um, before the warrant sign? All the other ones. I think we went over them. We over them, right? It's just. Yeah. I don't have any recollection of needing to revisit any of them. Do you? No, other than, you know, we talked earlier about the you know, water merger. When do we want to yeah. bring that up? So I did, I did get in touch with with people as he was kind of bond, and he did confirm those numbers. The, with a 3% a, a increase. So what, what Fred and I discussed earlier today was we had two proposals about um, the merger of the water systems. And one was from Core Engineering and one was from Time Bond. And the McClure proposal, the price was $34,000, which I assumed was for final design. Uh, looking at it close, closer, it's actually only for preliminary design. And I think I asked during the meeting, and they said, right. no, there's going to be another contract after that for final design. Uh -huh. But for bid ready documents <clears throat> is what I was saying. And I said, no, you will not get bid ready from that contract. So, so uh, the, the distinction between preliminary design and final design is pre pre preliminary design just has estimates. Of cost. The, right, and this is conceptual. This is the concept, and this is an estimate. Like a scope of work. The no. time, right. So the tie and bond proposal, which is actually broken out into about five or six different tasks, takes you through final design. So 100% bid ready documents at $33,000. Well, that's a no brainer. So right. I, I, I confirmed with, with Peter Belinsky that those costs were accurate. This was provided to the town back in March. He said you probably had about 3% to that. Okay. But it's still under the it's still under the 40000 that we have appropriated yeah. in the article. One, one other item that he mentioned was, or one, one thing he recommended was that there's a possibility for USDA financing, USDA Rural Development financing for the actual construction of the project. And he said there's a possibility that that, that could also include design costs. The benefit of, of, of using USDA Rural Development for a project like this is that there's that there's a grant component oh, to it. Oh, that's nice. And we don't know what that is yet because it depends on some of the attributes of the town and the actual cost of the loan and things like that. But it's one thing to keep in mind that we should explore a little bit more, or I should explore a little bit more, yeah. is whether it, whether it makes sense to to outlay the 40000 for 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 bed-ready documents or just look, I guess, holistically at the whole project and see if it makes sense and the grant component could come in. Well, of course, if we if we allocate the forty authorize the forty thousand dollars, and then we find out we don't need to spend that much, right. we're we're okay. So my my preference would be to leave the article as it is. I think so. Okay. Yeah. And then explore the USDA Rural Development funding. Yeah. And the grant component. Absolutely. Which it's not going to be a tremendous amount, but it yeah. will be that some. Sounds good. So that would take up all of the the thirty three thousand or whatever that. Time bond is proposing. If you went with it, would USC grant would cover all of that? The the, the USDA. Cost? Well, it's a lo so it, well, it would be a loan. It would be a loan with a grant component to it. Grant component, but well, that component could cover mm -hmm. that first that thirty three thousand. It could be parts of it because you would you would finance the you would finance the whole project. Okay. 
Okay. You would finance design through construction. construction. Okay. And a component of so and a component of that would be would be grant funding. Okay. So we can't decide anything until you would figure out the USDA. I think we should find that out before we spend any money. Right, but I think it's a good idea to um, allocate go ahead and appropriate the money and if we don't use it, it's just gonna it, it'll roll back into right. it transfer back into free cash. Okay. Okay, yeah, sure. Sounds good. Would this be a time for me to bring up the funding for the vault? If you want to talk about that, sure. The, uh, I didn't speak up in time. At, at your last meeting, there was a vote on to fund the vault, which I had no issue with the vault. <clears throat> but I believe the vault was to pull it out of uh, capital stabilization. And we have a new fund now created from the sale of the cell tower which is a, a very restricted reserve That's fund. Right. This is Article 4. But it, it, the vault would come under that restriction, and it would leave our capital stabilization alone. It, we can't transfer from this reserve into capital stabilization. We could only transfer free cash it, to rebuild our, which we said we'd do at our annual town meeting. So if we take it out of the reserve fund, the specific one, there's no transfer of cash ever. We don't have to deal with it again. And we don't touch our capital stabilization fund. So you would reword the article then to just the main source of the right. fund. Literally, that would be it. Right, Brian? Just that would be it. We also well, we do have to take into consideration that the Finance Committee did, did approve coming out of the capital, capital stabilization fund. They did take that vote, so. Right. It's a recommendation. Right. Are, are there specific uses of the capital stabilization fund? What's the, as compared to say free cash, I guess you could use for anything, right? Free cash you can use for anything. It, well, we just don't have that much free cash because we're spending 400000 of the 500 and some thousand on other things. And we didn't want to get back close to the, to the cap for the limit. And so we came up with these other two funds. The stabilization fund here on the cell tower is a possibility. And I thought we talked about the cell tower as a possibility, or maybe it was the CBC. I don't know. No, and it's, yeah, well, with free cash, it's boat. it shows we have, what, 590,000? Right. Yeah. But I think we were going to. Right. Typically, you'd use 200,000 of that in years past to offset your tax base. And then there were some other 100,000 to uh, rebuild your your regular stabilization fund, which is low. We're waiting for the 188,000 to come back from the Mill River project. So it leaves you 300,000 to take you through is the entire year. Well, it, it's just I don't know what what the issue really what difference it makes where it comes out. I mean, I thought we discussed this, but um, I don't care if it comes out of the tower, if, if we're allowed to spend money for this, from that fund. It, it would be an eligible expense for that fund. It would be eligible? Right? Yes. Okay. And it, it's so restricted that we kind of need to, I think we need to focus well, on it. What it, it requires the whole intent of the, the receipts reserved for appropriation is that the town doesn't go and spend the money on pretty much one time item. One, one, well, they don't go spend it on your budget, your operating budget. Right. The, right. the intent is that there's, it's a control against that. So if, so the fund, I think of it, it almost works as a, as a capital stabilization fund, although it's not so called that, it's the eligible items are purchasing land, renovating buildings, those types of things, where there's where there's a hard asset that's important. Right, it's to impose physical discipline Correct. towns who would otherwise just spend it. Right. On ever, well, I don't say, budget. police cruisers and such. Um, I don't know, it's a relative advantage either way. 
care, Fred, where it comes no. from? No. Well, well, I, I don't know if, let me ask again, did, did you answer my question about, is there restrictions on capital stabilization fund? And what's that used for? There, there are restrictions that need to be, I don't know exactly what the dollar amounts, but it needs to be on capital items. Oh, okay. So, well, that's good, a capital good. item. So that could be used, say, to finish remodeling our offices here. Yeah. We have that money. To capital use. stabilization. It, capital stabilization is, is, it's, it's a rainy day account. But the rest of your vote was to replenish the capitalization out of your free cash at the annual town meeting. So you'll be transferring 64000 Okay. As opposed to not doing any transfer, just pulling it from the authorized fund. Well, your other point about the, it seems like the tower fund may have slightly more restrictions. So if we get a small item, this is a relatively small item compared to the size of the fund. And, um, you know, it's not like e either one of these accounts is earning more or less interest, <clears throat> right? So we're not, we're not losing money by spending a higher interest bearing account. So it doesn't matter. I, I, I don't hear a compelling argument except one of slight more convenience to take it out of the tower account. So I don't think the finance committee would have a problem with that. And if they did, and we got to town, we, we could just amend the article to the satisfaction of everybody concerned. Unless somebody presented a really compelling case, then we're good. My guess is they won't even notice. Uh, well, maybe not. <laughs> well, I, I I think we should let them know because they did take a oh, vote. No, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. But what, but what do you think? Do you, do you think it matters? Or do you think one's better than the other at all? I think if we took it from, I, I characterize the counts as follows. The capital stabilization fund is a rainy day fund. Meaning? For, for something comes up, emergency, unexpected. emergency measures, unexpected, yeah, unanticipated okay. um, things that happen. Sure. And we have the South Tower Revenue, the receipts reserved for appropriation, which is a restricted fund. And then we have the, the free cash, which is we have what we have the most freedom with. So if, if we can take it out of, if we can take it out of the restricted fund, it, it gives us more flexibility, gives us more money with greater flexibility. Okay. If it's not coming out of free cash, if it comes out of the capital stabilization fund, again, to me, that's sort of a rain day fund. All right. Forget when it. something happens. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't have a, a, I don't have a big preference except if, if we're going to take it out of capital stabilization fund, I would like to see it go back there. Would be my preference. Well, let's just leave Which capital would like to stabilization fund alone. A rainy day, like, leave, leave it, it the way it is, and then leave it the way it is, and get it from the tower again. And the meeting, put it back from somewhere. Yeah. So, reword it to say, I don't know what that account is technically yep. called, but I would move we change the wording to reflect that. Okay. Right. Right. Sure. Sure. Yeah. yeah, because the other, other thing, keep in mind, you know, some of these major projects we're going to be talking about tomorrow uh, could get expensive. And even though there's grant money for some of them, there's going to be a need for match money. Some are matching, others aren't. So, uh, well, by annual town meeting, we should know kind of what we're looking at for them. But. Right. Well, I too early now to say, but there is match money. They're not all grants. Not all grants come free grants. You need match money. And that can range from 100 to 600,000, 700,000 for grants if you get that. 800,000 you're looking at. Match is match for grants. 
So, so we'll get half if we raise half, they'll yeah. give us half again. No, that's the ma that's, that's the, the match. That's the match. Right. What it could be the there? match. It could be the match. It could be up that high. I'm not saying it's going to be, but it's possible it could be up that high. Yeah, we know. All right. So okay. So, but we need to sign. We need to sign. Yeah. Okay. So the Green Communities Grant absent and extension will, will expire on December 31st of this year. I've, I've been told by the school that that the energy control measures that are being implemented should be completed by mid-December. Mm -hmm. And they're currently working on um, using the excess for the LED lighting. Okay, so that will use up all the excess? The, their intent is that it would use up all the excess. We'll get that grant closed out and then it would make us el eligible to re uh, to apply for a, another green communities grant for other purposes within the town, whether that be the, the, solar the town hall or solar or yet to be determined. Okay, that work will all be done by the end of this year. Okay. Absent, in, absent in, in extension. Okay, cemetery stone restoration contract. Okay. So. If you recall, there's there's a contract to restore the cemetery zone, um, and that was to expire. Or the contract was to was to end. I believe it was the end of the calendar year. Well, it's a it's a one man operation, and he broke his leg this fall. Huh. So they're looking to extend the contract to June 30th. That's fine with me. That's okay. Okay, sure. This is the this is the, this is the CPA funds yeah. to restore the. The original, the original date was this fall sometime? The, the original date, was, the intention was for it to be done this fall, this fall before yeah. the snow flies, but they've had some setbacks that are <coughs> really outside the control. Of okay, fine. Anybody? Consideration of personnel policy recommended okay. by the personnel committee. So there are two policies, the personnel committee that we talked about and they are in your packet. One is children in the workplace policy. Mm. For that one. Mm -hmm. and the other one is we talked about distinguished service, uh, distinguished service award. And the, the child and why do we why do we have this? There is none right now. So children in the workplace policy that came up when one of the one of the candidates for the library position requested or asked if it was possible if um, it was possible to have um, her child with her at the library for a couple hours I believe it was each day or each week um, each day and when we looked to see if we had some sort of policy that would give us an answer consistent answer for situations like that we didn't have one. and this is a, a policy mm -hmm. that was suggested by the personnel committee and it, it pretty much says that that it's not appropriate for children to be brought to work except for really unavoidable or emergency situations correct and in that case they need the, the employee should should speak with their supervisor and the supervisor sh should consider facts such as uh, the work environment uh, how old the child is how long the child needs to be there those types of things where if you could sit a child at a desk and they could color and um, you know kind of just be invisible it's different than if you're working on a backhoe and yeah yeah you yeah. have a two-year-old that's an extreme example but this is but this prohibits say every day <clears throat> children coming every day or, or two days a week because there's no sitter available in day so every Thursday and Friday Right. I mean that that's that would be the intent of the okay. of the policy. Yeah. But with 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 the flexibility for those situations where 
something does happen. This was discussed by the, the personnel committee and re recommended by the personnel committee at its last meeting. So, and who we have the final say on this, or is this going need to go to town meeting? Or? This would be a policy adopted by the board of selectmen. Okay. Is this something that needs a decision soon? We could decide right now. You well, can we, decide now. Can we can we wait till Jonathan's back? Is, is something that the three of us should be deciding on? Well, the personnel committee thought. Personnel, okay. With, um, I don't know how you set these in the past, whether that's, you needed all three to sit, three to sit. I don't think we not. need all three. No, but, okay. But, you know, I'm happy to wait for Jonathan, but um, I, I would like to see this put into place. Okay, the child care, child one? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I have, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, I have no problem with that. And I think, uh, there's no other law that applies here. There was something we talked about that night at the meeting that it was already like mandated by the law. The, the, the nurse, which, the nursing mothers. Nurse, the, yeah, okay, so we don't have to bring that up. All right. No, I'd say we're, we're okay. I think Jonathan would thank us for dispatching with another item here. Then the, the second item recommended by the personnel committee is the idea of a um, distinguished service award, and that would be for uh, volunteers or employees who have continually and faithfully served the town in a formal role for 25 years or more, will be ending his or her formal involvement within the town, for example, retirement. And that those people would be eligible for to receive a some sort of small award, a plaque, or some other type of award that thanks them for their service to the town. Uh, I thought it would be best if the personnel committee would nominate um, eligible volunteers or employees to the select board. The select board shall consider the nominations. The main is discretion award the um, award the distinguished service award. It's a, a way to recognize longtime employees sure. or volunteers who have had uh, some formal role in the town and not 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 a not a small role but a formal role for very lengthy period of time. How did they come up with the 25 years? That was uh, a debate that the personnel committee talked, talked Some, about. Yeah, somebody was getting an award or, or was retiring after 25 years or it, maybe even longer. It, it came up in the context of, of the retirement of one of the on-call firefighters. Yeah. yeah. I think he'd been there for 50 years. A long time. And yeah. It came up in that context as to whether the town should be recognizing I think a so. dedicated yeah. uh, person who's put a lot of their time into making the town a better place. Yep. We also talked about, oh, so we should vote on this, I guess. I move to accept this policy. Fred, does that work for you? Yeah, I. I I think I mean I agree with the, with the policy. I, I I guess I'm a little hesitant about the 25 years, as opposed to well, I mean 20 years. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know how many employees are more than 25 years today, or or committee or any committees on this, <coughs> right? Volunteer committees, or we want some sort of formal regular involvement within the town. Yeah. So whether that be boards, committees, something like that. Yeah. Okay. The, 20, okay. the 25 years is a I recommendation guess, yeah. from the personnel committee. If you think it should be less, it's a, it's a select board policy, so. We can change it. Whatever the select board determines I'm, I'm okay with this for starters. If, yeah. if Jonathan comes back and you say, oh my God, we should have made it 10 years, 15, 20, that's fine. Too. For, for volunteers and stuff, maybe, yeah, maybe 25 years, but for, I say right, employees, maybe. Yeah. It could could be less, but okay. Yeah, I'll go along with what you got there. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Thanks. 
Mass DEP Small Town Environmental Partnership Program. This is a new initiative from Mass DEP, and they're looking to partner with communities in a voluntary program um, to review environmental compliance of municipal municipal facilities and develop a strategy to correct any outstanding issues. So this is it's essentially a program that you could partner with Mass DEP, and they will conduct what amounts to an environmental compliance audit of municipal facilities and then help you develop strategies to come into compliance where you are out of compliance. So See, that is... My, my knee-jerk reaction is, oh, that could be expensive. Yeah. That, I, I vote all on this one. So... Especially since they've been so cooperative with our project. Oh, yeah. Okay. My okay. concern... If we don't, is... Our, our shared concern I read later on in the letter, it talks about should the audit identify violations, participating communities will enter into an agreement in the form of a consent agreement, sound familiar, or other appropriate agreement containing a negotiated schedule to return to compliance for violations which do not involve immediate threat to public safety. However, if there's an immediate threat to public safety, you need to remedy it immediately. Uh, so, um, I don't think I need to try to do any more convincing. Okay, next. Because I've, it's hard to make a case that Let's move on. we would open ourselves up. Yeah, really. Even in good faith to, if, I, there's, I, if there's I, a stick I, I on the back end. If there's some sort of egregious violation endangering the public health, we'd know about it. Right? I believe we would know about it. Yes. These um, opportunities um, um, only come up once in a while, you know? Um, unless by not participating we make ourselves vulnerable to some sort of revengeful action. I, I wouldn't think so. It's an opportunity for 10 to 12 communities, so it's not um, even a wide... Oh, we don't have a chance. It's a widespread. Yeah. It's not, it's not a very we have a green community for work, for God's sake. We can't spend. We can't spend. Well, hey, we're spending. We are spending. It. So, do we talk about December? Okay, December meeting schedule. So, uh, you're okay with December 12th at 6? What uh, day of the week is that? Monday. Monday. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Okay. Six, okay. And then we'll go without anything till the first Monday of January. I'll miss this all, but I think we can manage. Are you? gone in January? Uh, no, unfortunately I'm very much here. Okay. Are we thinking January 9th? Because that second is New Year's Day holiday observed, right? Okay. So do you want, to, uh, is it the 9th, the first Monday? 9th would be the second Monday. Do you, do you want to go that long though? It's December 12th, it's almost a whole month. Oh, we'd have to go oh, Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, we talked Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. Thursday. Well, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, and what, what week? Week of the first. Well, I could do that. I'm, you got break. I'm available. Okay. The first week. Do you want to do Wednesday? Just to yeah, sure. Uh, Wednesday works. So what is that, the third? Wednesday, Wednesday is the fourth. 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 Okay. So I'll check with Jonathan, make sure he's okay with that. Okay. So December 12th and January 4th. It'd have to be later than 6, because I have a, supposedly a meeting at 6. Oh. Wednesdays. Uh, first Wednesdays in the month, Wednesdays and Thursdays of the month, so if it's at 7, it'd be fine. Or we could do Tuesday. So would you prefer earlier on like Tuesday at 6 yeah, on Tuesday? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, I'm not teaching again until the end of the month. Okay, so... so 6 o'clock on the December 12th and 6 o'clock on January 3rd. Okay. And then, and then the one after that, do we need to schedule it? Or? Well, let's just take it this far. Yeah. Yeah. Okay.
Remind people of the major projects information meeting tomorrow night at the elementary school at 7 o'clock. Talking about four major projects that are on our website. Uh, so there'll be some a presentation and then time for discussion, open discussion on each of the projects. So invite everybody to, to attend. There'll be babysitting services available for those that have children that need that service. So. Any uh, dessert? Yeah, have that there will be refreshments, well, yes. I just think the public yes. ought to know. There will be refreshments <laughs> available, so. Uh, okay. One, okay, that's it for the announcement. One other thing, I think we need to look at our uh, priority schedule. Maybe uh, after, town, after the special meeting, whether you want in December or January. Yeah. It's been a while since we looked at that uh, yeah. schedule of projects. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. It's, it's, it's evolving. Yeah, it's <laughs> evolving. There's some things done and other, others are, are still in limbo for a while. That yes. We need to just, we, uh, or you need to help us figure out yeah. what should be priority to get done because some things are dragging out. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Yeah. All some right, well. Go quick. Have you got something dragging right there? A couple things, town okay. administrator updates. One is the Comcast contract. Each week I tell you it's close. Mm. And I'm going to tell you it's close. Is Again, it closer or just it's close? It's closer. Oh. Of course, you know, we could get halfway there every week divided by half. And mm. Right. You never get there, right? You never get there. That's what it feels like. So. Each, each week I pencil it in for the next select board meeting and I end up erasing it. So I'm going to pencil it in for the 28th. Sounds like the Williamsburg home. Road Bridges. Yes, yeah, speaking of, hey, good segue. Speaking of, oh, well, Haydenville Road. You know it's paradox. Yeah. Hayden, <laughs> Haydenville Road, Mountain Street. Yeah, I don't know if you saw the letter oh, yeah. that was included in the packet. Yeah. We finally received a response from MassDOP, which said that they're going to put together a scope of work and preliminary costs the 25% design for the reconstruction of Haydenville Road and Mountain Street. They didn't, they didn't go so far as to say they will pay for it, but they went so far as to say that they will put together a scope of work and find out how much it's going to cost to do that. Okay, well, so, baby start. steps. Yep. <clears throat> the renovations in the town office have begun. Again, that's to partition off the office space from, from the larger space in the back, and that should be um, the contract has that wrapping up by the end of the month. So Great. we have, uh, I'll, if, I guess Mary Ellen can speak for herself, but we have noticed a considerable difference in the warmth in that office yeah. when it, now, that it, now that the wall has been up and it should get even better once we get doors on. And is that wall, that wall's not insulated, is it? Um, no. I'm not sure. I don't believe so because no. it's two conditioned spaces on either side. Are yeah. both sides going to be finished? Yes. Uh, no. Uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Of the the one that separates um, Mary Ellen's That's office right. and Lynn's office, that one's going to be yeah. finished on both sides. But right. the longer one is going to be finished on one side. It's one side. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Bill River Grant. We're still attempting to close the grant out. I had a conversation, phone conversation with with uh, some of the representatives from MEMA and. We're trying to get the reports that we need from the consultants to finally wrap that up and put that to bed. Good. And Complete Streets Tier 2 funding is on hold currently. That was the promise from MassDOT that each community could get $50,000 of technical assistance to help them prepare their uh, Complete Streets prioritization plan. Good. That is on hold. And I'm told it's likely going to be reduced from 50000 to 35000 per community. But they have concerns that they're going to run out of money. So the, the, that funding is on hold. I don't know if we'll ever see that money. So we have an application to enter that already? Is this for the center of town? Uh, do we have an application in? 
No. Um, I tried to, uh, I spoke with the coordinator yeah. to figure out the exact details of how we submit an application and she told me, she asked me to wait and said, the funding Until the money is gone. Until the money is gone. gone. Right. The money is gone. Yeah. It sounds like the money is gone. So we won't get the, uh, the 25 or 50, so what would be the next step then? Um, well, the program would either get Re additional money mm -hmm. yeah. or, the, or they may wait uh, to see if there's leftover money with the towns that have um, current program, you know, are, are currently going through the process. If not, the next step for us would be to work on the prioritization plan ourselves and submit that get that approved and then we would be eligible for the four hundred thousand dollars in construction funding which I'm a, a bit skeptical about seeing that what's happened with, mm. with 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 the step two or the tier two of the program so, so is that at home as well that one there? I, I haven't heard Never. has any of it been spent or obligated or? I believe that they have done some projects they have done okay yeah okay um, last thing, this is a contract from the state to transfer a small amount of money. This is the local cultural council funds that the, the town yeah. receives into its revolving fund. So we would just need to, um, I guess if you both want to accept it, it would just be the, the chairman that would sign up. Well, sure. I think three months. So that's $4,400. <coughs> oh, wow, they bought it. I think it's $3,400. <coughs> it used to be 3000 for Maybe it's 3000 Doug's 4400 in here in the letter. Yeah. Oh, 4400 That's good. Nice. So, so here. Yep. That would be spot here. I don't apply for this. Done my town administrator updates. I just got a quick one on FCAP, and uh, maybe Dan can maybe shed some light on it. <clears throat> Sunderland put out an RFP, FCAP's been awarded the RFP, and they're either in negotiation or finalized for FCAP going into Sunderland town office. So, just a matter of interest. I don't know if you've heard any more on that. No? Okay, they'll keep in the loop. And on red, yeah. Is that going to be all the space that they have available? The no, takes I'm going to take I, I, I have no idea. Okay. All right. There being no further business. Right. 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 I'm going to adjourn. Second. All right. Thank you, everybody.